Uh, my name is Sajahan Sharif and I work for Portland Community College, uh, Cascade Campus in the gymnasium uh, as a front desk staff. My job duties are pretty simple, you know, but I kind of take this job as kind of, uh, you know, students coming in term to term, there are a lot of them are really stressed out and uh, a lot going on. So I try to be a factor, not just send them the card, but to really, uh, you know, treat them as, you know, treat them well and to make sure that they, um, that they get whatever that they're coming here to look for. So this is a great uh, place to come and get a workout, um, you know, term to term, you know, you could pay, uh, if you're a PCC student or staff, you know, $12 per term and you could have them have the usage of the facilities um, Monday through Saturday. So it is a definitely a great deal and anyone that uh, works for PCC or goes to PCC should uh, take advantage of that and we are here to serve you for your physical education needs. I graduated back in 1991 um, when I took, uh, I was an art major, um, but within that time, the two plus years that I was here, I really kind of jumped around in subjects, you know. I, it's kind of like I always know that I'm a painter, I'm an artist, you know, here and here. <laughs> Um, but I always venture, you know, and then I always come back to my creativity. Sri Lanka, that's where I was born. And I guess you could say, you know, raised, you know, I guess I feel like part of me was raised in, in my home where I was born and part of me was in this country. New York, I feel like I was raised in New York. And uh, coming to Portland kind of like the, the, the last Phase of just you know into your adulthood, I guess you know. <laughs> so when we first came here, uh, my family we started out in Jersey City, New Jersey. So that was the introduction, you know, to me of America. Um, so uh, then, as a, as a you know teenager, I always ran into the city and I ran away, like most kids do, I guess I don't know. But um, and that was, I think partly to look for, you know, I didn't know it back then, for, for music and art and definitely dance. And, uh, you know, 1978, you know, a little bit after that, that's when I feel like, you know, break dancing and, um, you know, soul music was just at the height and I just kind of went, fell right into it. To go into the city where creative arts, I usually feel like it really thrives. Um, my earliest memories, of uh, creating art, I have to say, I was probably a you know a graffiti artist back in Sri Lanka. I would find coal, you know, which is after a wood is burned, you have coal, and I would draw with them on white walls, of course, mind you, freshly painted white walls at home, and of course you get into trouble with your folks, you know. But every evening, you know, back home, you know, people take a nap perfect opportunity, you know, when people take a siesta, which is, I don't know what it's called in Sri Lankan, but in Tamil, um, I, it was my opportunity to go, you know, get some coal and just go at it. So that, the language I speak is Tamil, so I would always sing Tamil songs, um, uh, like listening to radios. <laughs> Nan kai garil alda vilai, tu yer kal garil aldi vande. Man telling the woman that he's going to write her a letter. <laughs> I like Georgia O'Keeffe's work. What I've been able to read about her life, it seems serene. Um, that um, she. Seems like she's, she lived a good long life being an artist, but at the same time, not being pulled into what uh, society would um, push on to her about what it's like being an artist. And I know I, when I say this, I could speak for all artists. It's like whatever medium you would get your hands on at whatever times in your life, you know? So for me, um, over the years, I've been fortunate at times to have the medium that I want, to be able to go buy a good set of acrylics and canvas and paint, and then other times not to have enough to be able to buy your medium. 
So you create um, art with whatever you have. For instance, my, my cooking these days, because I don't have my studio, uh, I feel like uh, cooking has become my medium to create my colors or to, to express myself. A lot of my figures, I feel like watching um, the Bollywood movies on big screens and then um, they used to really uh, like black and white movies and then and then you catch a one frame of that movie so i think that has influenced me a lot especially when i do the figures and then i have flowers in their hair or the nose ring just a real um, a lot of jewelry so that that has influenced me and i also like art that's not completely finished um, or uh, or just you know i, I like I, I like uh i like to create art that it feels like you know maybe it's almost finished but not really that's maybe the problem in my life <laughs> Dancing and painting, uh, I think that, you know, most artists, you know, including myself, for a long time I, I was painting in my studio and it just felt like a, a just a, a lonely activity, you know. So when I started to paint in front of people and I, I felt like I was able to invite other people literally into my life and to my canvas. So um, as you know, you know, I'm a dancer you know, uh, but I'm also a painter, so I, to try to mesh those two, over the years I've done that. Um, so it's kind of like when I, when I am dancing and painting, I am not, you know, I'm neither here or there, so I become like, I'm winging it a little bit, dancing, uh, but at the same time I'm painting, winging it too. But a lot of time I found over the years, people and kids will come up and I'll let them put a whole bunch of paint on my canvas, and then I kind of use that to, to create a piece of work. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, it, it's, I guess it was my process. And one other thing is that whole, uh, one of the reasons I realized back in September, the unfortunate incident happened, uh, the 9-11 stuff, because uh, I wanted to get out in front of people and paint and to kind of let people know that I was an artist first, <laughs> uh, more than anything else. So I don't know if that kind of played into, because that's kind of when I started to paint in front of people, not just on Alberta Street, but in front of my shop on MLK. And then, because I wanted, I wanted to be identified with an artist, nothing else, not my skin, not my religion, just, you know. Um, and, it, it, and, and you know, that's what I can tell you. Yo, yo. Now, you know, no matter how this project turns out, I feel like I could just die and go on to heaven. You have fun? Yeah. Good. No, seriously, I just, it's just like, and I do like all of know. everything else in life to keep going, but I know it's like some form of creativity, you know, makes me living. So if I could take a picture of this, hold it in front of me on the coldest day and go, hey, I was around. Five, five of us doing doing this, you know, right here, camera. <laughs> All right. Hold it down. Got the bling bling. <laughs> That's so third world. I can't believe man rushed to put the shiniest thing he's got on him. I literally hurt. <laughs> So somebody, somebody must have been a family member back home. Uh, somebody was taking a photo and he rushed home and got himself the, the, the pair of socks he had on and ran back and pulled up his pants, pulled, you know, from... Uh,